Alrighty, hello. It is Michael. I am working on my game engine again, and game engine again. Just decided to do it live. There we go. All right. Um, so I, the last I streamed, the last live coding I did was two days ago, um, where I had finished up a system that allowed me to um, not only uh, write formatted INI files, but to merge INI sections and keys um, with existing files as I go. Uh, so that was a surprising amount of work, um, but it, it's totally worth it because um, now I can just, with a really simple API, um, come in and, and write out the contents of an INI file. Um, it reads like really easily. You just um, say get value, tell it the kind of value you want, and then you just use it like <coughs> um, with a special data type that um, has a STD variant at its heart, and it also like you know does the uh, uh, move re move replacement the way that good um, file saving systems do. So yeah, it saves to a temporary file in your temp folder, and then atomically moves it instead of attempting to write over the file directly. Um, and there's also a backup system. So if you uh, um, are working on, an, on a configuration file um, or editing a configuration file um, from the game code, um, instead of directly editing the, uh, the golden copy, the known good uh, reference copy of the INI in the content folder, you are instead uh, generating um, a copy in the user's app data folder and uh, working with it and it automatically rebuilds if the file goes missing and all those other nice to haves. Um, so moving on from from that, uh, my next next task is to uh, uh, start getting some some rendering systems going because technically I've got all the framework I need to start building systems and start making a game um, but, before I make a renderer, um, there's a, a little bit of um, housekeeping to do, and this is going to be one of those things that um, winds up being a larger project. Um, the way that I have planned out um, the overall engine design is that you can slot in systems that can include renderers, but can also be um, gameplay systems. So, like you can add a system that um, makes it so you can attach um, components to your entities that give them special behaviors or um, whatever. Um, so the idea is that um, creating a new system is a um, fundamental way to alter gameplay, um, and it's intended to be the uh, primary way by which you alter gameplay, uh, not attaching scripts um, to uh, the way that you do in like, uh, Unity, that you make everything a mono behavior, throw it on there. It's a little bit closer, like in Unity terminology, it's a little bit closer to dots, um, but it's a lot more flexible because you have, you're working at a much lower level. Um, but in order for that to, in, in order to make it easy to write renderers and make sure that um, you can interface well with like a material system, um, there has to be a way to make your shaders um, easily support um, easily support the stuff needed by specific systems. So, like if you needed a, a, a if you wanted to put input a, a specific shadow model. Um, to, you want to do shadows in a specific way, and you wanted to write it, write a, a, sh a, a shadow system. Um, the way that I, I uh, envision having that be done in the game engine um, is to uh, write a system that sets up all the shadow stuff. Um, so you would make a, a system that you would that would call. Um, I don't have I don't have an example yet because I haven't written it yet. But um, like if you have a, a, a uh, a system loaded up, and do I have a system? Yeah, I got this test system I made just for the sake of it. Um, and like when you go to initialize the system, you register a uh, call to. Um, here's like the init for this. You would go to uh, scene manager or make scene manager and like do a register um, a pre -draw, draw function, and the pre draw function will um, automate will um, allow you to. Um, do pre-calculation stuff like like rendering your shadow maps um, can be done as a pre-draw step. And then when you actually want to draw to the scene, um, like a like a mesh or something, um, they those systems would 
register the, the scene draw function. Um, but then uh, if you want those two systems to be you know, uh, modular, like you can't, you don't want to introduce a dependency um, that's hard to undo. Um, so my plan is to support include files in GLS GLSL. Um, that's going to require quite a bit of work. Um, but like, for example, the in my simple little, um, oh, I just put it in illegal code there for me. Uh, control, pause break, and F5 again. Um, in the simple little uh, spinning cube I got floating in, in here uh, when it builds, uh, it is using a GLSL uh, shader, shader file. Let me find it. Um, from Presently, it's in the content directory, uh, testshader.glsl. Um, and I've got this, I've got a uh, pre-parsing pre step that does a couple of uh, a couple of things. The first thing it does is it allows you to do the vertex and the fragment shader in, in the single file. Um, right now it says EP shader, test shader. Um, that's how you specify the name of the shader. Um, and you can actually specify multiple shaders in a single file if you want. I don't know why you would, but um, the idea is that you can load up the shader file by file name, and then when you want to bind a, spe bind a specific shader, um, the graphics system call is like graphics. Um, oh, did I not include the graphics system? I did not. Um, using graphic or enterprise graphics. Um, it would be like graphics, um, find shader, and then you provide the hash name uh, that you provide in, in the file. So in this case, it'd be test shader, and then that then that shader is bound. Um, in order for um, in order to interface different rendering systems correctly, um, I am using um, I'm planning to implement, and that's this is going to be one of my next steps, um, a system by which you can include. Uh, files that will automatically set up code that you need. Um, so the only the only mandated stuff from the game engine are these two uniform buffers, um, EP per camera, EP per draw, um, which basically just provide you your um, camera stuff. So you got your view projection, view projection, and world um, world uh, position mate, uh, data. So you can um, you can uh, use the Use this stuff to position your world in, or position the stuff in your world. So, for this example, um, when I go to make the um, do the render, um, the GL position comes in, and I just multiply it by the EP uh, matrix MVP, um, which takes into account um, things like the camera um, and automatically puts the vert vertices in the correct space. Um, so like this stuff is like universal. Like you're always gonna have a view projection matrix. Basically, um, you're always gonna have all this stuff, and there's always gonna be need for you, like in lighting calculations and whatever, to have like the um, the world position of the camera and stuff like that. So I'm just saying that all this stuff will be included. Um, but the way that you do include it, I'm planning to do, and this is what I'm getting. This is uh, uh, what's up down the road. Um, is that instead of having to put these these uniforms in directly, uh, you would just do um, an include, um, very similar to a C include. Um, so in like in all of the uh, shader files that you would write in, in enterprise, you would say include, include enterprise.glsl, that's like your basic one. Um, it includes this basic stuff that every shader uh, must have. But then if you wanted to, to make a like a lighting system, um, and you wanted to make its stuff available for um, for other stuff, you could do include um, you know lighting.gsl or something. Um, and then uh, within it, it would include the uniform buffers for stuff that it needs, um, that it needs to have loaded. Um, the system can manage loading up the uniform buffer, um, which is available across shader programs, so you don't even have to know what shaders are. Um, and then from there, uh, you would use like helper functions that are written in GLSL within that header, and then uh, use that to update the update your shader code below. Um, used in tandem with um, another feature uh, that I've included, which is um, uh, Pragma option. Uh, Pragma option is a way for you to specify um, 
variants of your shader, and then you can spend. And basically, you you um, you put in the options that you want. It's like a switch statement almost, and a for every option that you provide on a pragma option line, it produces a variant where if you turn that that feature on, that will uh, it'll use that version of the shader. Uh, so like I can do option underscore to say I want one where none of these options are enabled, and then option um, with lighting, something like that. And then in your code, in your shader code, you can do like if def with lighting um, and if, then you can write code that's that's um, that works with a, with a specific system um, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's that's coming down the road. So um, in preparation of that, I actually got to take care of something a little bit more fundamental, which is um, why I entitled this stream um, uh, Switching to GLM. Because at present, let me uh, go back to math.h. At present, um, just using a little, a little math library that I wrote for uh, very simple graphic stuff. Um, and I've decided that I'm not going to continue with it, um, even though it's you know got a lot of features in it already. Um, I have done um, uh, all the matrices that I all the commonplace matrices that I might use, and I can do you know orthographic matrices and do uh, frust uh, you know frustra matri matrices and perspective matrices and um, all that stuff, um, and it's got all the all the the basics for matrix and vector math. Um, the bottom line is, is that I'm going to be doing a lot of um, CPU transformations soon. Um, so when I go to write my first 2D renderer, and pretty much I'm not anticipating doing a lot of 3D stuff um, up front, I'm probably going to start and stay with 2D for a long while. Um, but like when I go to write a 2D renderer, like fundamentally, you know, in order for your 2D renderer to be fast at all, you got to do batching. You can't, you can't just, you know, uh, set a transform for a quad um, every, you know, for every quad, and then uh, do a draw call for every quad. That just that would be um, insane. Um, and I don't really want to spend the time um, learning how to do um, the compiler intrinsics necessary to do um, uh, SIMD, um, single instruction, multiple data. Um, which is like um, an easy way to accelerate this kind of math. Um, so I've decided that um, I'm just going to go ahead and switch to using GLM um, with the uh, GL math, the OpenGL math library. Um, because even though I will probably at some point uh, add support for um, DirectX, and I definitely will add support for Metal at some point um, on uh, the Mac OS side, because even though OpenGL is on there and I have it working, um, eventually, you know, you can't really count on OpenGL working very well on on Mac after a certain point since it's officially deprecated. Um, but when I go to to work on those things, uh, GLM's um, algorithms, like apparently, like people like are people use those with DirectX and and um, Metal and stuff just fine. Um, like the data is formatted in a way that you can still. Um, pass it off to the to the API and it works fine. So I'm just gonna let um, somebody else do ha, do the work for the math stuff for me, um, and I'll just hook myself up with GLM. Um, here we go. So GLM has got um, I think it's an MIT license, Happy Bunny license. Yeah, I don't know what this is about. Um, the Happy Bunny license. It's like a it's like exactly the same as the MIT license, but like they have like a um, here it is restrictions. By making use of the software for military purposes, you choose to make a bunny unhappy, which is like you know don't play silly games with your licenses. Um, but it's available with the MIT license, which means basically I can just use it, um, and as long if I'm in, if I'm distributing the um, software um, in whole or in substantial um, parts. Uh, then I need to include, include the license, which I do anyway for all of my all the libraries that I source. Um, 
uh, and when you go to compile and ship a game that uses it, um, that technically that doesn't include substantial um, portions of the software. You, like you can create a product with it and not have to worry about putting like like the MIT license in like the game credits or something. Um, so that should be fine. Uh, I like to do these as uh, um, submodules, as git submodules. Um, I also ha happen to also like using premake. Um, I haven't bothered to, like I'm not, uh, I'm not like a professional C++ dev or anything, so I'm, I'm not as familiar with a lot of the working tools as other folks. Um, I have yet to learn CMake, and it's on my to-do list, but I just haven't bothered. But um, Premake was um, pretty easy to learn uh, relatively. Like There's fewer moving parts, so it was easier for me to get my mind around. And the channel happens to make a decent introduction video series to it, so that's what I've been using. Um, so for now, what I'll need to do is I'll need to um, I wonder if I should fork it. Um, how do I do this for the other stuff? Let me go to um, my vendor folder. Um, Glad was something that I had built. Um, that's something that you built um, off the website um, and then you have to make your own project if you're going to do that. Um, I made hot constants with premake. Um, YAML CPP. YAML CPP I, th I had to fork in order to have, um, in order to work with premake because when you uh, pull the library by itself, it doesn't come with uh, this and you have to make a, little, a few modifications. So what I think I may need to do then for this one, I may need to actually go ahead and fork it. Um, and then from there, I can make any changes I need. Uh, so I don't fork stuff very often, so I'm wondering where the button is to do it. Uh, code, maybe uh, pull requests. I actually don't spend a whole lot of time on GitHub. Where is the fork button? How do you make your own branch, or your own fork? I'm sure I'm staring right at it. Fork, yes, there we go. Where should we fork it? We'll fork it to my account. Cool. Awesome, um, I'll need to make a few changes to it. Probably so. Let me start by. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and clone it, and then make my changes that I know that I need, and then after doing that, I'll just directly pull it in. Uh, so let's go to Studio Software. Uh, I guess I'll throw this in experiments for now, even though it's not really an experiment. Open up Git Bash and do. Uh, Shift insert for. Well, I guess this is the bash terminal, so I can do control V, but um, get a GitHub. Oh, and that only does the address, so I need to do git clone. Um, and do I need to consider anything else? Uh, no, it doesn't say it. Doesn't, doesn't indicate that I need to like use recurse submodules or anything like that. Um, which you know makes sense. This is just a math library. Git clone. Yep. Yep. And that should be popping up here. There we go. It says done. JLM. Um, and say what the readme. Yeah. Markdown. Maybe that's okay. Here we go. Um, big old complicated stuff. Getting started. Uh, header only library does not need to be compiled. Um, we can use GLMs. 
implementation of GLSL's mathematics. Oh, if it's header only, then I don't need to fork it. I don't need to fork it up. Um, but where does its implementation go? Is it all just inline? Uh, you can go headers. You can separate headers. You can uh, include only the stuff you need, which I think will I'll take advantage of. But dependencies does not depend on any on external libraries. Yeah, if I don't have to compile anything, um, like are, are there literally no no CPP files? We got all these headers. Yeah, I, I didn't anticipate that. Um, in my own math library, I, uh, I mean, I suppose I could have made these inline and throw them in the header. That probably would have been smarter. Yeah, it kind of looks like if I go into one of these files, uh, extension type def mat4 dmat4 uh, type mat4.hpp. I'm just doing a gut check to see how. I'm not seeing it. HPP by corner. Um, matrix double four by four. So I guess I need to find out what that mat class contains. Um, include type mat four by four dot HPP. So that's underneath detail. Type mat4.hpp. Okay, so here's actually what the structure looks like. Uh, for starters, it's a template. Um, so all templated stuff pretty much is, is header only anyway, um, because it's defined based on how you use it. Okay, so yeah, I don't even need to fork it. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna uh, go back to the folder and uh, shift delete shift delete to completely delete it instead of just throwing it to my recycle bin and let me go back to my account I'm just gonna um, is there a way for me to delete the fork there it is GLM um, do I have to do I don't need this and I don't want it on my account, so. Hmm. Whatever, I'll figure out how to get it off my account later, but for now I can actually just go to the original and, for, and uh, clone it. So I'll go ahead and copy the address um, and then come back to the enterprise directory get bash here um, and I forget exactly the details of git submodule whenever I have to do stuff like this I always have to google every little thing which is a little time consuming but for me it's easier than just keeping it all in my head um, git submodule add and the address but I also need to tell it where to go. So I'm pretty sure you just specify the path after you specify the address you're getting it from.
So go to that module, add, you provide any options. Um, you provide the path to the repository, and then you provide path, which I'm assuming is the path. The optional argument path is the relative location for the clone sub module to exist uh, in the super project. Yeah, so I would provide the path to, in this case, I would go to enterprise, vendor, um, and then make a GLM folder. All right, so get sub module, add, put in the path to the, the address to the thingy uh, on GitHub, uh, and then I need to do a path to uh, the vendor stuff. So it'd be underneath enterprise, vendor, uh, and GLM will be the folder. Um, yep, cloning into enterprise vendor GLM. There we go. Um, and now I've got the module added. Um, I've got to do a few changes to my premake. Um, actually, I need code open. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. All right. Cool. So um, in my overall um, project, I need to go to premake find Lua. And I need to uh, add the include directory for GLM. So um, the only other header only library I've got in here, well, there's two actually. I've got the, um, I've got Glad and I've got STB image. Um, Glad though is header only in the sense that you have to still um, create a .c file somewhere that includes the header and you, ha you put the preprocessor macro to say, this is the file I want you to define the functions in it actually does build a translation unit. Um, STB image. I thought STB image was a header only. I thought that was the entire point. Um, but I'm seeing that I have a build or I have a dependency listed here. I can get, need to check on. Uh, here's an STB image. Bin, bin it, include source. Yeah, so this is the same kind of deal with S2E image. Um, I do need to create a translation unit to define stuff. Um, and, and I built one where I got, I say that I want to do um, images without PSD, TGA, GIF, HDR, and whatever. Um, so this is the first case where I can literally just add the include. Um, so, this is for the solution. I don't think I need to include it in the solution. Actually, I do, and here's where you do it. Um, so sys includers um, is different than includers. Includers uh, is stuff that's loaded with single quotes, uh, or sorry, double quotes um, around the file name. And sys includers is um, stuff that you do with the angle brackets. And while um, Visual Studio allows you to do either, um, I do also compile my stuff in Clang on Mac. So that's actually an important distinction here. Uh, let me throw that in. I guess there's not really any particular order here. Um, I'll throw that in enterprise vendor uh, GLM slash, I'm assuming it's called include, but let me double check. Vendor GLM. 
It is not called include. It is called GLM. So I guess it would I would just do GLM uh, because when I go to write in the source code I do the angle bracket GLM slash and GLM would be the stuff. The only thing though is that um, I don't I kind of don't like it that. Um, the headers are not like in a special folder that says include. Like if you take a look at you know Glad, you have the include folder, and it only contains the stuff that you that you might include, um, which makes it a lot cleaner to say um, that when you go to use IntelliSense to fill in, it'll say, oh, did you want to use the Glad folder or the KHR folder? Um, but because everything in GLM is located in here, if I include just GLM, then it'll include CMake doc and all that. Um, I guess though uh, I will automatically be excluding things that are not part that are not dot h or hpp or c or cpp but those don't exist so I mean as long as there's not anything in these other folders that have um, dot h or dot c or something in them Oh, there is though. There's test find glm.cpp. All right, so I'm going to include just the glm folder and I'm going to see whether the other files appear. Um, it might be just by the fact that they are cpp files and not um, not header files that they won't that they won't show up in IntelliSense. But if they do, then I need to escape that. Um, and I'll do the same thing here. Your prize vendor YAML, well, not YAML, <laughs> GLM, um, without the include on the end. And save it. And I don't think I need to do anything for the pre make folder or pre make file within here. Oh, that's right. I don't have a pre make file for. Um, these, they're all within the main pre-made file. All right, cool. So that's that. Uh, with that done, uh, let's go to, let's open up a console window and we'll run, I have a helper script that is used for um, generating sol solutions and projects from uh, pre-make. Uh, so that should be enough. I'll just run it and when we open up the solution now, it should um, have the include path for GLM. It doesn't show up in dependencies because I'm not compiling those as projects, uh, or I'm not compiling GLM as a project. It's literally just headers. Um, if I go to properties, or sorry, properties for one of the projects. Um, and I go to see uh, directories, um, take a look at the list. Uh, we've got vendor GLM now at the bottom. So according to the guide, that should be enough. Let's go to um, any old file. We'll go to in include GLM. Um, Kind of seems like I'm good. It doesn't look like I've got any of the CPP files that I saw. Like um, the CMake folder doesn't show up, which was the one I spotted CPP files in. Didn't I spot a, C a CPP file in there? Um, let me search for not CPP. Here's one uh, open file location. 
Um, so under vendor GLM test. So does the test folder show up? GLM, oops, GLM test. Okay. Yeah, so it does appear to be purely restricted to the header files, which is exactly what I want. All right, cool. So now we've got um, now we've got the uh, GLM library sorted. That actually is probably as fast as as fast as I've ever added a Git submodule. Um, but now I need to commit the change. So the Git submodule is automatically staged, which is good. I also want to stage the new premake file at the same time. Um, this guy, uh, and just quickly gut checking myself to make sure that I didn't make any other changes. Yeah, it's uh, just got the additional line for the include. Let's add that as well, and we'll say in a GLM um, submodule. And commit. Cool. And go ahead and push that. Cool. So now we've got GLM in there. Um, and I'm not really familiar with GLM. I've literally never used it before, but I did some research onto its capabilities. And um, I know that its API is pretty similar to what I want. Um, and I figure that other folks who might start using this library probably are familiar with GLM as well. Um, okay, get the status. Cool, so we're all good. These changes are things that I don't really care about. This is this is data stuff. Um, and I haven't really come up with a scheme for what I, if I wanted to exclude any any data files from source control, like I, I might want to do to, um, even when it's just a game engine library, um, I still may want to do version control for um, GLSL files now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, at some point, I may I may just add like um, the content or data directories um, for the for the game project to be get, uh, in Git ignore, so it doesn't give me those warnings uh, that there's changes that I didn't push. Um, so yeah, now that we've got it going, um, now that we've got the include in there. Hey, how's it going? How were classes today? Let's go to graphics. Yeah. Boring. Oh. I don't really I don't really um, understand PHP. <laughs> Is it it's just like um, transferring stuff over the internet, right? doing now, um, now that I've got GLM added to the library so I can put it in a header, I am going to start using it everywhere that I previously used my math library. So I'm going to start by commenting out all my stuff and then seeing what breaks and then going through and replacing the broken stuff. Shitty out. PHP is a shitty outdated language for server-side HTML generation. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Man. Well, I'm sure that once you've got all those fundamentals understood that your work will be a lot easier. Um, hopefully, I mean, hopefully it's there's some, there's some value behind it. <laughs> um, cool. So the header is done. I need to do, I'm going to save that and go to math.cpp. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna uh, Casey comment out the whole thing. Hmm. If you, um, huh? If you're uh, not interested in web dev, um, why are you uh, studying? I don't, I'm, I'm not a web dev. I'm not a developer, to be crystal clear. I've never worked as a programmer. 
It's a da databases module. Uh, you mean like a class module? Uh, like you're learning about databases? Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. And I press F5 and see what breaks. Yeah, database stuff is, um, yeah, it can be real complicated. Um, I, I only have like a small inkling about um, how complicated it is to work with servers because of um, a limited a limited role it had in a job as a tech support person. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I don't envy you um, having to study all this stuff. All right, let's take a look at the error list. <laughs> Yeah, there's quite a lot. So I use I used to use um, 821. That's actually more than I thought, but still, um, I was expecting a lot. I use um, my math library in a lot of places, especially in the graphic system, um, but you know, also in the input system. So like right here, I'm using a math vec2 for um, get mouse position. Um, I'm going to need to figure out a good way to handle the include. Yeah, yeah, you were pretty close. Um, Eight hundred and twenty-one, I think it said. Eight hundred forty-five. Yeah. Um, so the the elegant the elegant way of the the reason why I did this is because I got this nice clean list of all of the things that my math library depended on. Um, so I can just start going through and replacing them, um, not one by one, but like find the file where the problem exists and then Control F replace the things I need to replace. Um, so for starters, let me go to the manual and see how you do a VEC2, um, because I've literally never used GLM before. Um, manual. Uh, t -t 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 uh, I say getting started. That's a good place to get started. It's getting started. Then why? Oh, then why switch to it? Um, GLM is a is a pretty tried and true math math library. Um, technically, I have um, most of the capabilities I need in the, the little math library that I wrote for my engine. Um, but one of the big problems that I'm going to encounter very soon is that um, it's not very very performant. Um, specifically, I want to have SIMD available. Um, it's, you know, like, uh, like having your own math library is enough when you're, um, all you're doing is you're packaging up data to send to your graphics card for, uh, GLSL stuff. Um, but if you're, if you're doing a 2D renderer, which is one of the stuff that I'm going to be doing soon, um, then you want to have, uh, you know, it sounds like I'm reading your comments as I'm talking and realizing you probably know all, everything that I'm talking about. Um, uh, vectoring stuff, uh, vectorizing stuff isn't difficult. It's just using a few intrinsics. Yeah, um, I don't know anything about that though. <laughs> That's part of my problem is that I, I I've never used um, SIMD, uh, and I think I would just rather have the library take care of for me um, because there's always going to be new stuff that I haven't haven't considered needing um, to add to the library, and I I don't want to spend forever working on a math library. I am pausing though because I see that you said uh, one second. And I suspect there's a link coming my way. Take a look at that link you sent me. Let's, so what am I uh, looking at here? Uh, include a server. 
is this code that you copied from somewhere. The second one is a scalar version. Um, oh, did you send me two links? You did. Um, which one did I open? The first one, I think. So the, the is this a um, mass trialloc? No, these are um, helpers or something. Mat try multiplication. So this is a math library then. Reading string. Oh, that's there's the there's the actual data there. That's the matrix. Um, floats of rows, columns. So I, this is like what uh, allocated on the heap. Mat try alloc rows mats struct mat out. Um, Aligned alloc, okay, and it's a line for good um, stuff on the, the graphics card. Okay, and then uh, this is the SIMD one. Um, so I'm actually not even sure what to control F4 for, for the SIMD intrinsics. Um, so I'm just looking for them. Uh, perform the scalar multiplication. Um, What's the, um, oh, this is the wrong one. I'll try multiplication. Okay, here we go. Um, size T, sim D, body, uh, dim divided by alignment times alignment. Um, I think this is a pretty good educational little resource you pasted me here. I think I'll probably want to take some time to study it. So um, that's what this is, uh, underscore mm set. Um, we're setting uh, bits on the, on the register. Yeah, I'd be happy uh, to have you take me through it. Um, I'm not sure that I'm. am still like even even uh, putting aside um, whether I what you know how easy it might be for me to do um, SIMD on my own math library. I also don't want to spend any more time on my, my own math library, so I might not do this today. But yeah, let me save that link for sure. Um, yeah. Um, does this does this cover like multi-platform stuff, or is this just Intel? Um, realistically, I'm going to be only developing for Intel, but I mean, somebody might have an AMD chip. Are the intri intrinsics multi-platform? I thought they were um, uh, uh, CPU specific. Uh, the SMD stuff was. Okay. Yeah, that's that's something I'll need to take a little bit closer look at. So if if I was to use these intrinsics. You're saying though that um, if somebody was using AMD CPU, then they then it would work still just fine. Okay, and so and this works on your Ryzen. Okay, uh, okay, that's cool. That's actually something I didn't realize because um, I, I know that um, one of the things that GLM does is it considers which intrinsic to use um, per platform, from what I understand. Um, so like that, there's a variety of different compilers that it uses intrinsics for. Um, and I need to make mine work on Mac as well. Um, not really planning on Linux. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and control D bookmark this and throw it in my enterprise folder. Um, and I, I assume that this stuff on pastebin will go away if I don't save it somewhere. So let me kind of just control A. I've never used pastebin before either, but I'll just go ahead and I'll have individuals to do. Yeah, thanks for, for this info. That's really handy stuff. Um, is this code that you wrote uh, yourself? The
Nice. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, that's directly applicable to what I'm uh, I'm doing. Yeah, I'm saving these files to my desktop, and I'll take and review them later. Um, and then I bookmark the uh, Intel Intrinsic Guide. Um, yeah, for for the purposes of my library, I'm gonna go ahead and just finish um, with with GLM um, because even like setting aside that that I, that I might be able to, I, it's it sounds like it's a lot more approachable than I had thought. Um, learning how to do the SIMD stuff, um, there's also the chance that I'll need to do to to add more things to the library in order to do do math. So I'm just kind of um, yeah, I'm just gonna have, gonna let let GLM take care of it. Um, yeah, and that, that's yeah. That, that speed up is something that I think when I when I started working on my game engine, I didn't really understand or anticipate how important that would be. I was just thinking, well, I will just send it to the GPU and and uh, and have it do with the math, and then I don't have to worry about it. But I've never I I'm, I'm I'm still new to graphics programming as well. Like I've learned how to use OpenGL for the first time on this engine, um, and so now I kind of have a better picture that oh, I actually need to be doing transformations on the CPU um, to to uh, batch stuff before I send it to the GPU. And so now I kind of got an appreciation for this. Um, but anyway, I guess the gist is that um, I can either include the glm.hpp or um, individual libraries. Um, and I think that I probably just want to do glm.hpp. Um, Vec two, all these versions of mat matrices. Though honestly, I don't think I would be using anything with two in the matrices. Um, almost anything I'd care about would be four by four, um, with you know like maybe maybe some three by three if I'm transforming a um, vec two or something. But yeah, in case I need it, I might as well. What's in this forward dot hpp? Uh, oh, there's like uh, type defs, so you can use uint16 instead of um, these other types, which I don't really care about. Well, look for you depending on whether you use float or double, you can use, you can now do one row times column one so the instruction. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. This program. yeah, it's uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. I had done um, even though I I don't have a renderer in place right now, um, I had built um, multiple batch renderers on on uh, my framework to while while I was learning OpenGL um, for the first time to kind of figure out how I wanted to do GL uh, GL shader um, integration. Um, and I, uh, I realized that, yeah, it's um, a lot A lot of what I'll be doing is on the CPU. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for those, those having those gains just for using SIMD. Um, anyway, so I guess what I'll do is I'll just use glm.hpp. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw it in my precompiled header. I uh, generally reserve this for stuff that um, comes from the standard library um, or from one of the uh, libraries I've included. Um, so this way, the header is going to be precompiled. Though I'm not sure what much good whether that will do much good because it's templated. I don't really know how templated headers work with precompiled headers. Would that mean like with that? I'm assuming that that there would be some some things that are faster. Um, when you go to compile, but um, the fact that a template doesn't, um, the, the the templates are implemented based on how you use them. Um, I wonder if that if I'm actually getting a speed gain. But either way, this is where I'm putting all the headers that I, I rarely change, so I'll just throw it in uh, eppch. And now that it's there, I can just start using it. Um, let's go to the input system. Go to one of these red ticks. Uh, where I've got math vec two, uh, so this function I'll say returns um, the equivalent would be a glm yeah a glm vec two I think so glm vec two okay 
Um, and then I guess for this entire solution, what I can do is I can say um, replace math vec2 with uh, glm, oh, glm vec2. I think it's, was a it lowercase v? Yeah, lowercase v. Um, and I'll do that for entire project. Um, are templates uh, expanded by the preprocessor or are they expanded by the compiler? Uh, because if it's the latter, I don't think they would have any speed up. Um, unless I'm forgetting how precompiled headers work. I'm also a little bit vague on how precompiled headers work. Um, I know that they, I mean, they're, they're not literally compiling like translation units when you do it. It compiles into like an intermediate bytecode, is my understanding. Um, like it's a, it's like removing a preprocessor step that you would have to take care of before you um, take the whole translation unit and convert it into binary, uh, or take the whole, the whole a pre-processed CPP file and turn it into a, a translation unit. Um, so, like, if it's that, like, if it's literally just you make the bytecode for the header and then you make the bytecode for the base and you just stick the one on top of the other, then there would be a speed up. Um, but if it's like, if it like has to like consider the template template um, implementation before it like does the bytecode then that would be a different story. And I just don't know uh, enough about the low-level compiler stuff to know which, which one it is. But um, for convenience sake, I'm going to put it in here anyway, because it's um, this is where I put stuff that I don't ever really change. I'm not really going to go in and change the stuff in the header. Um, OK. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, I'm realizing that Enterprise is actually the namespace that the, um, that the uh, math library was in. So I need to replace um, all instances of enterprise math with just math before I do any more of these wide um, replacements. Um, and then the uh, enterprise, now I've got some enterprise GLMs appearing. I just need to make those GLM before it's just replaced. OK. Um, and I guess I could just start going down the list. Um, I know that I need to replace. Um, oh, I forgot about matrices.cpp. This is another um, definition file um, from my math library, um, where I've got all the matrix math. Do I need to comment out another? There's math.cpp, matrices.cpp. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so I'll save that. Um, and then go uh, down the list. So there's math um, vec3 is now going to be glm vec3. Place all. 22 occurrences replaced. Um, and then I don't think I'm doing any vec4s anywhere right now. Zero occurrences, yeah. Um, and then I've definitely got um, math threes and math fours. Well, definitely got math fours. I don't know if I've got math threes. Um, Twenty-seven math fours replaced. Um, as I'm understanding the terminology, if you're using a n by n matrix, then you just have you just specify n. So mat four is a four by four, I think. Can I go to GLM? Oh wait, not mat. Just to gut check me. Um, GLM mat two three. Yeah, that would be like this is a double precision mat matrix, and it says uh, mat two x three would be a two by three. So yeah. Um, math at four. I already did math four. Did I do math three? Okay, guess not. And I don't have a math two class, so I guess that is probably everything. Let's see whether this compiles. Yeah, 
it occurred to me that even if I've done all the replacements, it probably won't, <laughs> probably won't um, fix everything because I uh, have not changed anything about the implementation of these. Um, like when I get the uh, rotation translation or identity, identity matrices, I presently get those from a static member function of the type, which I'm sure is not how JLM does it. Um, syntax error. Uh, got a syntax error. Uh, oh, that's weird. Oh, because I replaced, yeah. So actually somehow I accidentally got this situation going on um, because I had to replace a, a enterprise math with math and I accidentally got extra colons in there. Uh, and that should be GLM. Back three. Actually, better yet, I can just do math quadruple colon to GLM double colon. Eight occurrences replaced. Okay. Oh, but I still have, uh, I still have these capital V's on them, and cap capital M's. Uh, so I guess what I'll do is GLM capital V and do and replace it with GLM lowercase v. Yeah, thank God for source control because if I was if I screwed something else up in here, oh, like that. <laughs> Apparently, there's a place somewhere in some of the documentation. Um, okay, yeah, that's great. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's actually searching the GLM documentation, it looks like. 5,600 uh, replacements done. Control Z. Yeah, let's, un let's undo that. Um, what? So um, one of the things that, uh, let me close all but this. Um, one of the things that um, I didn't quite like about the way that the headers are organized in uh, the GLM library is that uh, you go into GLM and it's like you have to like include this folder in order to be able to say GLM slash. Um, but there's other stuff in this folder. Like they don't have just like an include, include, add the include folder and um, it just by itself. Like, I mean like all, almost all of these, all the libraries I'm using have the nice, yeah, you know, just like this is the folder you add to your, your uh, Visual Studio solution and, and you know, and, uh, then you can just go glad slash glad. Um, but in GLM it's like, I don't know. It's not quite worth me forking the thing, but, um, it's real annoying. Uh, thankfully, the include um, helper from uh, IntelliSense or whatever it's, whatever it's called um, doesn't include all of the extra stuff. It just includes the header stuff. So, um, or does it? What's this uh, dot inline? I guess it's a header, but it's got a. I don't know why it's got dot inl on the end. That's not something I'm familiar with. Yeah, this is literally a header-only library, um, so I don't have to build anything on it. Um, otherwise, I would have to go in and fork it and make a make a dependency. And I'd have to fork it because I, I use premake as my build solution instead of cmake. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll have to do this do search for this whole thing um, and do it match case to prevent all those 5,600 replacements that I came across. Oh my god. Um, replace all. Yeah, two occurrences <laughs> way down from what it was before. Um, Or you could just ride your own and build it as part of your engine. Not much, wink, wink. My, my educational value. <laughs> yeah. Um, totally could. Um, don't want to. <laughs> I just want to move on. Um, 
the uh, I've yeah, it's I have I have that gut impulse to just do it my do everything myself, um, but I'm uh, you know I had my thirtieth birthday a little while ago and I uh, realized how short and fleeting life is. And I decided to not waste all my time um, rewriting you know rewriting the wheel. Um, there we go. Uh, and we still got failures, but at least this time it's probably not from failure to use the correct type. Uh, cannot convert from int to glm back three. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I technically provided an overload so that I can just say position equals zero, and then it would automatically build me a um, type with zero, 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 zero. Damn. <laughs> damn. Yeah, damn, you 30? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no, that's a. That's an appropriate reaction. Um, so you're gonna be, you're almost uh, twenty. <laughs> Sorry, it's a, you know, it's a, yeah. Eventually, eventually, everybody will have have that moment where they're just like, wait a second. All of a sudden, all of the protagonists from the TV shows that I like to watch are younger than me. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's coming for you. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, you know, uh, when when adults say that, you know. You should, um, you know, change what you're doing to save yourself some time. You start, you suddenly realize what they're talking about. Um, so this is a case where um, I'm totally happy to to not um, be doing this by myself. But I guess um, now I got to learn how I make a empty uh, vec three. Do I just do a struct with zero 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 in it? I guess so. Um, but can I just do an empty one and do a default constructor? That appears to work. When's your uh, birthday coming up? Soon. Next July, yeah. <laughs> Well, it'll be here before you know it. Um, almost half a year. Yeah. So I guess every time I do a return value on one of these, I would do braces instead. Okay, and I, I think these errors are coming down considerably. I'm already down to 61 errors. I know, right? Yeah, uh, nearly 2022. Um, yeah, that's freaking nuts to me. Um, just like all this time spent indoors um, because of the freaking uh, plague. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's bizarre to me that we are still indoors, um, still wear wearing masks and 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 uh, dealing with a global crisis um, and and this all happened over the course of years and it hasn't just been you know six months <laughs> oh my gosh yeah it's, it's just been it's crazy how time has has flown in the last couple of, last couple of years specifically um, and they usually fly by pretty quick where are we at? Uh, math is not a member of Enterprise. Oh, I still got a couple of these. I thought I had Control F and replaced all of the Enterprise math with math, but um, I guess not. Oh, this isn't part of the project. This is part of the game project, so that didn't happen. Okay. So I'll do. I'll do that now. Now I've got to do the rest. Oh, wait, what am I doing? GLM back three. Oh, is that the only one? That's probably the only one of this one as well. GLM back 
too. And then, how do I do perspective? GLM perspective, and then provide it. Oh, so it accepts radians instead of degrees, which isn't great. Um, my, I, I did my in my math library. I on very on purpose uh, did degrees for for the API because it's like asking a human to like consider um, angles and space um, in radians is a little. It's just it's just once removed from how humans think. Um, even though radians is like the more beautiful mathematical representation. So yeah, I guess that's how it's going to have to be. Um, so this would be um, per, or GLM perspective. No? Is that uh, not right? Why wouldn't that be right? GLM perspective. Is that not part of G the GLM header? It's not. I also have to include um, GLM extension dot HPP. All right. Let me do that. <laughs> Good riddance for your math library then. <laughs> yeah, maths is perfection. Yeah, it's like I like intellectually I understand that like you know working in radians is just is you know it's it's more mathematically appropriate than thinking in degrees and you know all these all these math equations that um, involve circles or angles or whatever um, you know natively quote unquote uh, accept uh, uh, radians before they accept degrees but you know if you're if you're designing a game you know you're not thinking you know, you're thinking in terms of like right angles of like 90 degrees um, being a right angle um, rather than, you know, point whatever, um, point seven or something radian. I forget, the, the, I forget the closest approximation of radians to 90 degrees. Oh gosh, quaternions don't get, yeah. Quaternions like, like I'm going to have to get into quaternions eventually I know because I need them for like, um, smooth, tr smooth interpolation of like angles and things. Yeah, but geez, <laughs> was the stream cutting out massively? Am I doing good on the speed? I'm gonna get, do a quick speed test. I don't necessarily have great internet. Um, my Wi-Fi does periodically cut out. I think, but I haven't been able to prove it yet. Yeah, that's my wait for my upload speed to come in. Yeah, my upload speed's not doing great, honestly, but it's probably, yeah, I don't know. What the deal? Let's re remove quaternions from every 3D engine. <laughs> I dig. I dig this, I do. Um, it's just that it's like, yeah, quaternions are just so freaking, yeah. It, uh, like there's mathical, mathematical p uh, places where I like, I know I'll need it. Like when I, when I eventually do like skeletal animations, I'll need to know quaternions and do quaternions in the engine. But yeah, like if I'm making an API, I want people to be able to think in like human terms, like roll pitch yaw and, um, and, uh, um, degrees and things. Um. But yeah, let's get back to here. So underneath this, I also need to include, include GLM uh, ext.hpp um, to get the helper stuff for perspective and translate and rotate. Um, now if I go back to, I forget where I was even doing, <laughs> doing this. Um, oh yeah, I was doing this for my demo, uh, my little spinning cube demo. Um, we we'll use, yeah, it already accepts a math for, um, we would use, uh, GLM perspective, um, and then that accepts, 
what? Uh, field of UI, aspect, near, far. Oh, no way! No way! My API exactly aligns to that. Field of view, uh, aspect ratio, your near clipping plane, your far clipping plane. Maybe maybe we, we went to the same tutorial or something. I didn't co I didn't copy it from JLM, but I probably picked it up from um, online where I found the other. Well, you can replace quaternions with rotors, and apparently they are simpler. Um, they are equivalent mathematically. Um, are rotors just, you're talking about roll pitch yaw? I'm not sure all the mathematical terms for these things. Um, camera, no instance to accepts GLM map. Doesn't it? Okay, let's take a look. Vec3, Vec3, F4. Oh, this has got to be. Um, I can't use zero for a, a uh, empty um, Vec3 anymore. Uh, rotors are generic quaternions, from, from what I remember from the video. Yeah, I, I, I. I yeah, I mean, I guess I could literally just Google it. Um, rotors, <laughs> brake rotors versus quaternions. There we go. Um, oh, that's part of the uh, the video that you're talking about is from the uh, from Let's Remove Quaternions. Um, well, here it is rotor mathematics. Um, oh yeah, this is. I'm not familiar with this. But it's not it's not roll pitch yaw. Um, it's just a ver. It's not. It looks like a, if I'm if I'm reading if I'm re reading the cliff notes correctly, this is like a a different version of quaternions. That's just a little more human friendly. Okay, I get it. So this is actually not about roll pitch yaw. This is about uh, using rotors instead of quaternions. Oh, ro rotors in 4D space. Um, yeah, because because in order to do three dimensional transformations, um, you do need to have the fourth component, which is why they're called quaternions. Um, what what I understand. So rotors literally work in 3D space. I thought that was impossible to do a, a to do any transformation uh, in 3D space with three terms. I don't know. I might have my history wrong, but oh, I've got math, math, math four in here. Okay, so it actually accepts a quaternion. View translate. Oh, can I not use uh, roll pitch and yaw in GLM? or a similar topic.
gimbal lock. I am not sure. Loss of one degree of freedom. Oh, I see what you mean. So that that you you're okay with you you have gimbal lock if you use um, rotors instead of quaternions um, or roll pitch yaw. Yeah, yeah that's kind of true. So I guess though the uh, rotate the the method that gives you a rotation matrix accepts quaternions. So is there a way to generate roll pitch and yaw for like do I have to generate the quad each quaternion um, or is maybe there a helper function for quaternions? Let me see. GLM qua qua <laughs> is that a quaternion? Uh, let's see what, what that says. Um, I got a wah HP. No. Quaternion types. Uh, okay. Oh, these are the list of extensions. Quaternion functions. You got slurp, conjugate, and inverse um, length, normalized dot, angle, axis. I guess this is where I'd want to start quaternion trigonometric. Gimbal lock is why you use quaternions. Apparently, you don't, which is whack. Yeah, I'm not like a. I've said this multiple times, but I'm not like a like a seasoned veteran of of graphics math um, or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm not necessarily aware of all of the consequences, but I think that like I know that I know that most uh, most people who are getting into game design are not familiar with quaternions. Um, so I like it like if I want anybody to use this, I think it would be great if if the person didn't have to think about uh, quaternions. Um, but I don't know. Well, well, I'll see how my opinion changes as I, as I learn more about the topic. Um, Returns the quaternion rotation angle, returns the cube rotation axis. Build a quaternion from an angle and a normalized axis. So I think this is what I want, because I can specify the uh, x, y, or z axis and the angle to rotate ar uh, around it, and then multiply those matrices together. Youngsters these days not reading the prerequisite material. Yeah. Yeah, I know. My life would probably be a lot easier if I did, though. <laughs> I, w I took through um, through a couple of levels of calculus um, in college, but um, I didn't, and, and, and some linear algebra, but I didn't uh, do anything super advanced, and it's not exactly fresh in my mind. I didn't really mess with quaternions. I just kind of know what they are. Um, and where they're used. Um, so I would I would use a GLM angle axis. I provide the a vec three, which is I'm assuming the the um, axis. It says angle though. Oh, it's heat constant angle. Vec three is for the axis. Yeah. Um, so the angle and then the axis and do they use the right hand rule or the left hand rule? It 
So I guess you can pick. Um, by default, OpenGL is using right hand coordinate system, uh, meaning, if I'm remembering right, it's like you put your hand like this or like that. I'm trying to remember. We should have, we should fetishize fetishize suffering more so that people get an appreciation for how hard it was back in the day. Yeah, exactly. The uh, rap to school was really hard and all that. Uh, I always forget the how you're supposed to hold it. So the right hand rule is that you're, um, so with your right hand, you do this, um, and Z is, that's not right. Hang on a second. I was going by that picture there, but it was indicating that Z was that way, and that's, that's not. Uh, okay. Oh, it has to do with the spin of Z. Okay, it has to do with whether it's z is up z is yeah okay so if this was z now i'm now i'm just confusing myself in in my in in the coordinates that i've been using um by default in OpenGL, uh z is z, positive z is into the screen um positive x is to the right and positive y is up um which and then rotation I haven't had to think too hard about this for a while um, it's been it's actually been, been a considerably long while since I've done any graphics programming in this engine um, I've been doing low level stuff for a while um, if I go to let me go to my uh, little spinning cube that I've got going. Um, so the way that I had it going before was I had a little pitch. I had the pitch rotating um, in the positive direction and the yaw rotating in the positive direction. And that was resulting in, um, I think the cube is tumbling this way. Uh, so that would be So if you're looking down towards the positive direction, it, a positive value will rotate clockwise. Um, which would mean that we're using left-handed coordinates. Is that right? I'm going to assume it's using left-handed for now. But the problem is that I need to actually be sure that I'm thinking of that correctly before I use um, GLM uh, angle axis to do my quaternions. Um, but I'm going to uh, in this case, I may want I may I may want to wrap up a helper class for this sort of thing. Um, for the moment, just so that I can get GLM working, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. I'm like, I'm just not going to draw uh, the little spinning Madeline cube, which I had before. Um, and then I'll come back to thinking about quaternions and whatever. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed you didn't write, just write the shell script required to build your project instead use the pre-built build. I mean, why not, though? I mean, <laughs> what a waste of time. And oh, I, I totally missed the sarcasm <laughs> reading the text. I'm not good at inferring that. Um, you could have, yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know if you've ever followed um, the Casey Murtori stuff, um, Handmade Hero. Um, that's literally, yeah. Like, like he's he's familiar with like how all that stuff works, and so for him, it's just literally faster to um, to write the shell script and just compile and compile everything at once without considering um, 
you know, uh, version history, like like which files have been modified or what. But for me, I, I prefer my Visual Studio and I prefer um, my build systems and my robust solutions. All right, let's take a look at that error list. We're down to 20 errors, so that's better than before. <laughs> Um, okay, so underneath push camera, yeah, I guess any place that I'm using my my previous um, rotation scheme, I'm going to have to reconsider the API. Um, like for put for camera stuff, um, I like when I uh, when I work with the camera. I, I kind of debated whether I even wanted to do a, a, a model of a camera in the core engine library, or whether I wanted that to be like up to the dev to implement how I really prefer. But ultimately, every every situation that you would be rendering, you have to think of a perspective of the camera. Um, and if you have, if I force uh, a enforce a single camera model, then that allows me to, that allows developers to make systems. Uh, that play nice with each other as well. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to like render like uh, a game like Portal, where you've got the uh, the one the the one scene that's like right in front of you, and then you can see through the portal, and it's like you can see the world um, as if it was rendered uh, as if the angle was from the view of the yeah you know the the whole complicated t uh, hallway of mirrors effect. Um, you could do something like that um, by pushing a camera onto, onto a camera stack and then unwinding it as you render the scene. Um, so you got the you got you start with the far you push push the entire stack of all the different portal cameras you want, um, including all of the projection matrices. So it doesn't have to be like cutting you can, you can do the exact thrust room you want. Um, and then roll back all of that to build the scene from the back end. Um, scenarios like that. Uh, but for now, literally anything that has rotation in it, I'm just gonna comment out. Um, Though I do need ViewMat in order to um, push them on the stack, so I'm just going to comment out the, comment out the whole thing. This is a return void function anyway, um, and I don't have a renderer built, um, so I am not shooting myself in the foot by commenting these things out. I'm not even using them right now. Um, and then error list. Uh, yeah. Uh, good. Uh, and then the identity matrix. I mean, is it just GLM identity? Um, but then I have to specify the type. Let's uh, go see what the implementation looks like. Um, identity, take the type name, gen type. Gen type is used for in it gen type, gen type tree. Interesting. Meta programming, programming stuff. Detail gen type tree, gen type identity. So I'm guessing that there might be uh, find all references. There we go. Uh, that's that's um, translation. Yeah, let me just go ahead and look through the manual. So interestingly, they just use identity without um, even specifying the dimension of the matrix, which tells me that it it um, in, that somehow there's a template deduction being involved here, where anywhere that you might use a four by four matrix, it would just use the four by four identity matrix. So I'm just gonna see if that works. Um, Oops. I suppose I needed to do that several times now. So let me uh, four times. 
It doesn't seem to work. So what am I missing there? Um, uniform buffer stack. It's for camera uniform buffer struck. Yeah, the last one's a VEC3, so that has to be constructed. Yeah, I'm getting a little confused by how GLM identity is supposed to be used. Because the example suggests that it um, template deduction can be done because they got translate. Maybe translate um, doesn't work the way I thought it would. Translate. Um, oops. Translate. No, it accepts uh, MAT4. So it accept, accepts a specific overload, just like I'm expecting in this struct. This particular um, place where I'm trying to work on the code, um, the, uh, gl the per camera global UB data stack, um, a little bit wordy. This is just the, um, uh, every time you push a camera on the stack, um, I store a new copy of what goes in the, um, uh, shader, uh, test shader, so these two uniform buffers, which I'm going to require be in every shader, um, and eventually I'll um, I'll hide behind the include file. Um, that's stored in this vector here, so it should be inferring that I want a four by four um, identity matrix, but I'm not getting one. Do I, is it gonna force me to figure out a gen type? Like, do I have to do like four or four or something? Let me go into um, the definition of math four real quick. Uh, I'm gonna copy the, experimentally, I'm just gonna copy out the, the template arguments that it uses and see whether that's what it's expecting here. No, no, it's not. Well, it seems to like the first two, but yeah, that's not it. Um, so I, I don't get how identity is supposed to work. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so actually, it looks like I can just use GLM map for use 1.0, and it'll get me a diagonal matrix. So actually, in the places where I, I was replacing zero with this um, for, oh, I was doing that for vectors, so that doesn't count. But I wonder now if I if I did. Um, a float instead of an int, whether that would work. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Uh, but for now, I'll do uh, GLM um, matrix or mat for and then 1.0f in the parentheses. Okay, so that, that's how you construct a identity matrix, I guess. later but that's what I need um, so what I'll do is every time I have this in my code I can just replace that with this and that should work for uh, current project 
um, matching case three occurrences. Oh, those were the only three. Okay. Um, so that should be identity done. I commented out the rotation stuff. So is that it? Is that the last one? Daylight savings time just ended, and I'm just realizing now that it's actually not even five o'clock yet, even though it's dark outside. Um, that caught me off guard. Um, okay, there's still one left, and that's oh boy, great. What's this X memory? So something about um, one of the standard template library stuff. Uh, enterprise graphics per camera, global UV struct. GLM mat four mat four mat four vec three cannot ar convert argument four from type to GLM vec three. I love how it points you towards the X memory header um, instead of towards the actual problem. But I thankfully I already know what the problem is. It's this. Um, the vec, there's not an overload for or not a uh, constructor for a vec three um, that takes the um, the integer type. Um, unlike how I did the other. So do I have to do, I guess I can do 0 0.0f and that'll construct a correct vector. Or at least it looked like it did. Um, can I, or, oh, I'm still got the same error. So that's not it. Do I have to Specify the whole thing. There was just shorthand where I could I could just do zero or braces everywhere for constructing another. But it seems to complain at me when I do this. So yeah, interesting. There are three. So I guess I'll do like so. Oh, no semicolon though. In other places that I've needed a, a VEC3 um, with the, just zeros in it. Okay, cool. So it's not crashing anymore. Nice. Um, in other places where I needed a VEC3 with just zeros in it, I was able to do just open and closing braces to construct with an initializer list. I wonder if there's a problem with aggregate initialization in the in place because it's templated. That would make sense, actually. OK, so I think what the problem is, um, the problem was for this specific spot where I tried to use the uh, braces to construct um, a VEC3, is that um, it's just an, an initializer list. And technically, the, st the stack I've got going here is templated, if I'm remembering right. Uh, it's a stack of per camera global UB struct. So I guess I needed an explicit constructor. And there's no explicit constructor where I can just plug in them by itself. Unless that works. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, there actually is a constructor that I can do that for, but I can't, I have to actually use the term VEC3 here. Um, because it won't implicitly figure it out. All right, cool. So um, that's the GLM library uh, working technically, <laughs> in, in, a, in a very technical sense. Because I can't, I'm not rendering anything right now because I need to figure out my camera transforms. Um, camera, because I had to just comment this out until I figured out um, how to approach the problem of quaternions. Um, so let's undo set camera for a moment. 
Actually, which one am I using? For, oh, I use, I'm using both for the demo. Uh, so let's start with this one. Um, so for starters, I need to replace uh, camera rotation. Um, the API that I've got takes a uh, camera rote, which is rote pechignol, which are you know camera terms. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use those to construct the matrix here. Um, previously, my my math library rotation function just made a matrix that um, accepted those values. Um, I might be able to come up with a helper uh, constructor for math four based on that logic. Um, it was math.h, or actually, no, that was in uh, matrix, matrices.cpp. Um, oh, I, I had case turned on. Here we go. Uh, so here's, the, here's what I had previously when I went to credit construct my rotation matrices. Uh, I've taken the role pitch and yaw. Um, I would convert them to radians because, you know, mathematics. Um, and then I would plug them into uh, this formula that I probably copied off of Wikipedia or something. Um, so it would do um, the square of cosine. Um, actually, no, it would be the cosine of, of uh, roll times the cosine of yaw and so on and so forth. I um, mean, this is actually constructed um, flip or in, inverted. Um, so, because even though the the um, matrix is, uh, I think it's uh, column major, um, in the data it's stored as row major because they that's just how OpenGL does it. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I could just make a helper function. Can I put it in the GL? Um, I could put it in the GLM namespace too. Huh. I'm on the fence as to whether I want to do that, but for the moment, I'll just do a helper function statically in the place I'm working on. Oops. Um, this will be uh, static. Um, Mat, except roll pitch yaw. Um, and then I had a helper function for degrees to radians. Um, I'm sure that GLM has one. Radians. Yeah, radians and you split the degrees. Cool. Oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, there we go. Control C. Um, and then it returns float, yeah. And, oh, and it's const expression too, that's great. Um, then I can just plug those into here. And uh, the, the the underlying data in the struct should be the same. So this, should, this constructor should work for uh, creating a um, GLM math for, so that should probably work. And I'll plug rotation mat into here. Um, too few arguments in the call. Oh, because there was a version of this where, um, right. I would do um, vec3 oops, mat, or glm vec3 um, rotation, I guess. And then I would use um, rotation dot x, y, and z instead. Uh, or do you, do you access them with dot x, y, z? I guess you do. And they have RGB as well, if you're, if you're worried about semantics. OK, I think I'm kind of getting 
the hangar jail. I'm Okay, now that works, and that gives you the inverted. Okay, and then I need a translation matrix, which JLAM translate. Um, okay, um, and it seems to. expect a matrix in the first? Oh, it's a, a const reference to a matrix. Why does it need the matrix? Oh, I have to plug in the matrix and then plug in the direction. So it takes a previous it takes a previous transform matrix and transforms it. So it's like okay, that's a little different than what I'm used to, um, but I, I can handle it. I think translate. So what I would do is I would plug in. Um, rotation mat. The problem being is that I can't just pass it rotation mat because it needs a const reference and this is an R value. Um, which means that it probably will still be in memory by the time it gets to here, but it's not guaranteed, so this is bad form. Um, so what I would need to do is I would need to do the rotation matrix out here. Uh, JLM mat for rotation. I'll say row mat equals rotation mat. And then I can do a const reference of it dot map uh, times GLM translate or times um, times nothing. Um, and then the second would be uh, negative camera position. Okay. So I think that works with my little helper function up here. Okay, let's do the same thing for this and then see whether I'm allowed to get my Madeline rotating cube going. looks correct. Probably will compile, but I'm just double checking. And then let's go to, yeah, good. Let's go to the scene, or the, the state that I'm through a test scene in. Um, and I'd comment out the stuff. Um, and then instead of using GLM rotate to come up with the rotation matrix, I will use I guess I'll have to use the um, the helper function I had, um, but before I bother porting that over, let me just do um, uh, a quick uh, quick uh, identity matrix. Um, to display even if it's not spinning. Okay, where did Madeline go? There must be something wrong with how I'm constructing these now. So push camera. Even if the rotation matrix was wrong, like if I was supplying the wrong angles or something to the matrix, 
you would think it would still be visible because it should be far enough in front of the camera to see everything. So I'm thinking I'm thinking there might be a um, problem with the direction I'm facing. Maybe there's a right-handed, left-handed coordinate problem. Okay, now what I just did was I flipped the, ca I did a um, mirror transformation of the camera. Um, I just took the, in the algorithm, I took what was the near plane and the far plane. I just put it on the negative side so it should be seen behind and upside down. Um, and that didn't display it, so that's not the whole problem. Um, let's take a look at the push camera. Let's go back to push camera. I'm going to set a breakpoint and just inspect the data when I get here. Okay, so camera position is zero, 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 negative five. Um, this will make inspecting a little bit weird. Um, I have to skip down to the ninth element to, or the sixth, sorry, the seventh, eighth, and ninth elements to, to uh, see what's going on for the Z. Um, rotation is zero, 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 because it's looking straight ahead. The projection matrix looks like a projection matrix. All these are zeros because it's like, if I'm remembering properly, it's like um, every row will be. There's, zero, there's zeros across the um, the diagonal, except for on the fourth element. Uh, the whole row has got stuff. Um, so the rotation matrix was calculated here already. Um, the view matrix uses translate. I guess the only thing that I didn't, I don't fully understand here, maybe translate doesn't take the negative. Maybe it takes the positive. Like maybe the idea is that instead of moving the, the object, translating the object in the space, you're translating the space relative to your 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 um, current space. So maybe I just had to take the camera position and make that positive. I don't know. A little bit of guesswork, but let's see what happens. Okay, well, I can see Madeline at least. <laughs> it's it's probably impossible to see on the screen, but um, Madeline is like way in the distance in the middle there, um, and she's upside down. So I'm apparently missing something. I'm going to temporarily set these rotation matrices to just identity. Um, um, F4, like so. And confirm that there's nothing wonky about, like maybe maybe the the way I store, had stored the rotation matrix data, maybe there's something different about the way that it's stored in GLM or I don't know. Um, yeah, that did nothing. OK. So I'm going to assume that the rotation matrix is fine. I guess technically I, sh I was feeding it an identity matrix anyway, right? It, it should have been because I was not rotating anything. So I step over a rot mat. 
yeah, rotation matrix comes out to 1, 0, 0. Uh, 0, 1, 0. Yeah, that comes out to an identity matrix anyway. Um, change the camera coordinate. position back to negative. My impression is that it should be negative because, okay, so I, if I have the camera position at, uh, it's negative again, meaning that like instead of moving the object around, you're moving it, you're moving yourself away from it, um, which is how camera transforms work. Um, that seems to put Madeline back in the picture, but why is she so small? There must be, oh, I know the problem. I'm just being a dingus. All right, all right, I know what the problem is. It's because the, um, back in uh, here when I'm doing the perspective matrix, I'm feeding it degrees and it doesn't like degrees. Okay. <laughs> okay, radians. Uh, okay, I suspect that this is gonna be the whole Monty. There you are, hey Madeline. Madeline's in the middle again. Technically, this is a cube with Madeline on all sides, but I got rid of the spinning animation for the sake of um, ensuring that the rotation calculation was not interfering with um, the ability to translate. Um, additionally, it looks like the z-axis is flipped, um, so the uh, I'm going to need to re I'm going to need to change it back to left-hand um, coordinates because. Uh, yeah, uh, it's this is a matter of opinion, um, but um, in my opinion, the Z positive direction should be that way, so that your character is always going forward in a positive direction. Um, and that's the way that I think it works by default in uh, DirectX. Uh, but in OpenGL, I guess it defaults to the other way. Um, and I was just kind of disguising that fact with the way that I calculated my math. Um, so yeah, pre presently, uh, it's the camera, um, when I'm pushing the camera on the stack, it is um, pushing the camera position at positive five, like it's back here, and it's not what I want. Um, so I'll have to rejigger that. Um, but before I do, let me uh, set the model matrix back to spinning again. Um, get rid of the identity matrix there. Um, and then instead of doing GLM rotate, because that's not a thing, I will plug in that helper function I made back in, I forget where it was. Here. Um, here. Um, and I'll, I think this is, having a function that just lets me construct, directly construct the matrix uh, from the rotation value. I think that has, uh, I think it's that's just too helpful. Um, so in unless I can find that GLM has this functionality built in somewhere, then I will probably uh, need to 
come up with that on my own and, and like put this in a header somewhere so that I can just use, I can just automatically create a rotation matrix. Um, so that would be rotation with normal pitch. Yeah, that would do. see how Madeline rotates. Okay, all right. So the good news is, is that um, the library is plugged in and I can do math with it. The bad news is, is that I've got some coordinate system differences, to say the least. So the first difference is that Z is inverted, at least. Um, and the second is that uh, roll and yaw, they're going opposite directions from the way they did it before. Um, I am very sure. Actually, now I'm not. not now I'm not very sure <laughs> um, that it was going this way or go, going this way before, and now it's going this way. So it's it's not it's not just that the z um, axis is pointing the wrong direction. I think there's a problem with the um, the other two axes as well. Uh, but yeah, we got uh, graphics going with um, with uh, GLM matrices instead of my handmade library. So that's technically, you know, mission accomplished. I'm going to take a quick little break, um, and when I come back, I will be uh, taking a closer look at um, getting the coordinate system in the shape that I want it, and then figuring out how to do... Uh, how I'm going to handle um, rotation matrix generation, um, given that I want to be able to just provide um, rule pitch and yaw instead of uh, instead of a quaternion every time. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to go on break, but I'm going to actually leave this cube running, and I'll just come back to it. Uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll I'll do the I'll do the break animation.
Alrighty, I'm back. Alright, so is Madeline spinning in space. Alrighty. So at this point, I got GLM integrated into the library. Technically, that is it's um, building correctly, and I when I go to push matrices to the um, OpenGL uniform buffers, they uh, seem to be working largely okay, but we've got a couple of problems with um, the coordinate system, because um, this is going exactly backwards from the way that it did before. Um, like I know that I know for sure that it would spin this way around the, Z, uh, the around the uh, y axis, um, but I'm also pretty sure, and my memory is a little bit uh, fuzzy at the moment. I'm also pretty sure that I went the other direction for um, the uh, rotating about the x axis. So. Um, I want to put rotation aside for a moment, and I just want to test um, test the x, y, and z coordinates. I should, I should probably get my um, Twitch thing back up on my phone. There we go, so I can see the chat. Um, all right. So uh, for starters. Uh, Taking a look at the way that I set this up, uh, the, the graphics API um, takes a, uh, a camera transform and it takes a um, model matrix. So the model matrix obviously being um, the transform that you apply to put something from, um, from um, uh, local space into world space. Um, and then the camera, the push within push camera, I have um, the uh, perspective um, and the uh, translation. So the translation is inferred from uh, this, from the um, from the uh, vec three that we use for the position of the camera, um, and the transform is a product of the rotation and the um, perspective matrix. Um, so the perspective matrix could be a per could be a perspective one. Um, it could also be orthographic. It could also be um, any other weird thing you want. You can, you can also use like um, non-standard frustums, for example. So like if you wanted to do like a first-person shooter where the the reticle wasn't exactly in the middle of the screen, you could do a uh, frustum um, instead. Uh, the first difference is that before I was rendering the object at zero zero zero. I put the camera at negative five, and that was supposed to be um, towards towards you. Um, in if you have uh, if you treat zero 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 as the center of your screen, um, the negative should be back towards the uh, human. Um, and then when I did that, you couldn't actually see Madeline. Oh, I forgot to set the model matrix. Whoops, hang on. <laughs> I forgot to set the model matrix, but uh, which is why we don't see anything um, going on there. Um, so I'm going to quickly set a uh, model matrix. Uh, set model matrix, um, and instead of uh, doing a rotation thing, I'm going to animate on the x, y, and z axes, and I'm going to see what that does because it'll tell me a little bit more about how this is supposed to work. So what I'll do is um, I guess I would do GLM translate. And I'm not really sure how much I like GLM translate because like I kind of want to just do a matrix that's um, like when, like when I use GLM translate, my impulse is to um, to just give it a uh, a direction, and that's it. But it's also asking me to provide a uh, map for every time. Um, so I guess I'll just keep doing that. Um, just provided an identity matrix, um, and then what it'll do is it'll presumably translate. Um, the object in that space. 
This might be one where I'm going to need to brush up on my math again because um, I had a way that I liked to do coordinates, but it doesn't seem to be working that way out of the box in GLM. So what I'll do is I'll do um, I'll do a sign of time time. Um, let me do game time. So my time system um, features real time and game time, which is useful for um, things like bullet time effects, like time slowdowns and speed ups. And what I'm doing here is I'm just um, wrapping it in the sign function. Um, so that'll um, oscillate from negative one to negative one um, as time goes by. Um, and that's going to be on the x-axis, I think. So I'll do um, aggregate initialization for the uh, vec3 um, time, game time, 0.0f, 0.0f. Good. Does that work? Um, oh, I put. I gotta put the parentheses there. Okay, cool. So sine of game time is the x coordinate. Um, let's see how this goes. All right. So we don't see anything because um, apparently um, the camera is moving in front. Um, instead of behind when I do negative. So now I guess positive Z is this way, um, which I'll address in a little bit. Now yeah, we got movement. So what this tells me is that the Z direction is the only thing that's flipped. Um, I'll find a spot to pause uh, here, um, and I'll I'll step out until I find a spot where I can um, see. Come on, let me just skip to the while. And um, update, another day, yeah, update, oh, no, I need the draw column, that's what I need, um, C manager, C manager, and go in, and I just want to see, um, what coordinate it shows for Adeline. Maybe the bit smarter way to do this would have been to um, throw a breakpoint in <laughs> while it's running. We do that. Uh, head back to uh, the state. Um, and we'll do the breakpoint in set model matrix. Uh, actually, let's do one right here. So I'll wait for it to be on the right-hand side. And then I'll set a breakpoint. So right now it's paused with um, Madeline on the right side. And if, I'm, if, if the coordinates are working the way I expect them to, um, sign of time should be um, positive. Um, so I'm just going to quickly uh, evaluate that in the debugger. Um, Why can't I add an expression? Oh, that's not my watch window, that's why. Um, do sign of time, game time. Uh, time is undefined. No, it's not. It's just not thinking in the scope. There we go. So um, yeah, sign of enterprise time, game time is 0.9, which means that, um, yes, the uh, right-hand side of the screen is positive. Um, 
And I should see a similar um, result on y. And actually, I just realized that I probably have an easier way of doing this. If I just add plus 1, then we'll see it oscillate from the origin to positive 2. Yeah, so that the right hand side is still positive. That's good. Um, let's do a quick test on on y. Um, I'm, I'm just I think I've got a, a pretty thorough picture of the coordinate system difference, but I just gotta check my uh, check my assumptions. And yeah, y is um, up still. So the problem then specifically is that z is going the wrong direction or the right direction depending on your perspective but my perspective is the wrong direction um, yeah so when I do a positive z um, it the cube gets closer uh, to me so now that I've confirmed that the um, the coordinate system is good. Let me uh, do a confirmation of the rotation, the way the rotation works. Um, I'll do, for now, I'll just do uh, a rotation on the pitch, which pitch is your x, um, rota or rotation about the x axis. So. Um, in camera terms, if you're like looking at the camera, uh, roll is this, uh, pitch is this, and yaw is this. And so, like you know, you can get most um, most common rotations that apply to game cameras or to real cameras that way, um, because like that's how you normally set on a um, tripod. Um, but it doesn't allow for certain effects to work very well, like screen shake, so it's not perfect on its own. Um, so I'm testing rotation in the positive direction on the x-axis, which makes sense. So that would be if you're looking at, oh, sorry, if you're looking in the positive direction, then it is going counterclockwise. I think that is actually correct now that I'm thinking about it. Um, so we should have a similar effect on Y. So yaw is um, about the Y axis. Um, so if you're looking up, um, we do counterclockwise, that works, that's correct. Uh, so actually I think the rotation stuff is working fine. I think I literally just have to go in and change from right hand to left hand. I must have at some point um, just made a decision to abandon, um, to abandon the um, the norm in OpenGL to do Z this Z in this direction, um, and so yeah, we're right now we're looking down the negative, so it's going clockwise, indicating that it's backwards from what I want. So let's take a look at handedness. Left. Okay. default, OpenGL is using a right-handed coordinate system. However, others APIs, other others APIs, I'm not, I'm not misspeaking, that's just how it's spelled. Other, other APIs such as um, Direct3D have done different choice in real life. That's a, 
that's a problematic sentence structure, but um, basically it's just saying that um, other APIs use the left-handed coordinate system. OpenGL by default uses the right-handed coordinate system. So I guess I must have been um, on purpose using uh, uh, the other coordinate system, and I must have baked that into the um, algorithms I used to create the um, the rotation matrix, which explains my other problem a little bit, I think. Does it? Mm, no, not quite. So it would certainly impact the way that I did my transformation matrix, but I'm now using GL, GLM's implementation, so that takes care of itself. Um, so I guess I'm going to need to define GLM force left-handed. Um, And while I'm looking at these other things, there might be there might be a, a bunch more of these defines that I want to plug in. So I might need to take some time offline and just decide what I want to keep. Right now, I know that I want this. And I'm on the fence about uh, depth of zero to one. Um, basically, what this is referring to is that um, uh, the clip space in OpenGL is a two by two by two clip space in so in all directions. So that is um, when you are transforming from whatever space that you're working in into um, the uh, clip the clip volume that actually displays. Um, you are transforming everything um, in the camera's view frustum, frustum um, into a space uh, that is that runs negative one to one, negative one to one, negative one to one um, on all sides. Um, and that's different from how Metal and Direct 3D do it. Um, Metal and Direct 3D use um, negative one to one, negative one to one on the X and the Y, but on the Z they use zero to one. And in practice, those are very similar things, but there there are some implications involved with um, with how you do the math and the shaders. Um, so I think like Unity, for example. Uh, handles this in their shader code by providing a macro um, um, there's like a there's like a macro I think where they have you can spec you you specify the near to far and like the macro like wraps around and is redefined whether you're working in OpenGL or direct 3d uh, if I'm remembering correctly um, And, and there's some other implications about how um, the how the depth works um, because if you're rendering to the depth buffer, um, half your resolution, you know, being in uh, if you're using a signed um, float, uh, one of your bits is not. Um, but yeah, I think for now I'm just gonna leave everything negative one to one, and then like in the future, like if and when I implement metal um, and or direct three D. Um, I'll reconsider how to approach this then. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we're going to be using a clip space of uh, negative one to one. So let's get force left handed in there. Uh, so if I go to EP, PCH, this guy, uh, and right before I include the GLM headers, I'll do um, define. GLM force left handed. And now, hopefully, Madeline will be, be spinning in the other direction. Because right now I have her spinning around the, um, 
I have her doing roll, which is the z-direction in the positive. And if we're looking down the um, the, po uh, the positive, so positive is that way, then she should be rotating counterclockwise now instead of clockwise. So, come on. It's having to recompile all the translation units now because I just modified the um, precompiled header. So. Come on. You can do it. No, I don't see anything at all. Oh, you know, I know what it is. I forgot to put the camera in the negative Z now, <laughs> because because uh, now we got a, got it flipped back the way that's supposed to be. Okay, so Madeline is still rotating clockwise though. So there must be still there must be something wrong with my um, with just porting over my rotation matrix um, algorithm. Um, because this was designed around um, having to having to design designed to handle uh, everything in a right hand side coordinate system, translating it to and from OpenGL's implementation. So um, definitely missing something there. Let me make sure I didn't screw up anything in here. The camera pause was negative. Camera road is negative. That's what we want. Was I did I mess up anything in the model matrix? No, I didn't. I didn't defect, I didn't change the code in there. And the model matrix is pretty simple. You just provided the matrix and then it will multiply it against the um, view project view matrix from the camera or the view project matrix from the camera um, to get what you want. Um, I'm curious if the rotation is different in the other directions now too. Uh, let me run a couple of quick tests on that. Um, on the model matrix, we'll do. Uh, we're doing roll. Let's do pitch. So this is this is going to be rotating on the x-axis. Let's see which direction it rotates. Okay, so it's doing this. Which means it's going clockwise when pointing down the positive x axis. So that's actually um, I, that's actually the same behavior as the x. So maybe that's correct. I don't, I'm not on the I'm not sure about that. Um, I guess one way to be sure um, would be to go ahead and redefine rotation mat and, and actually do a rotation matrix from roll pitch and yaw um, using GLM. So um, with GLM, we've got the uh, 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 angle axis. Looked like it was what we needed. Oh, what's Euler angles? Hang on. Returns Euler angles such as pitches x, yaw is y, roll is z. Um, and it takes. So you can transform a quaternion into Euler angles, which is great. Um, you can get Euler's constant. Um, is there a way for you to convert Euler angles into uh, a r rotation? Because if there was an inverse of Euler angles, that would be freaking perfect. Um, 
doing um GLM, GTX, Euler angles. Build matrices from Euler angles. Uh, okay, so it looks like there's an extension that does this. Um, which, you know, yes, please give me, give me more. <laughs> um, so I have to include uh, GTX, Euler angles dot, HPP. Uh, is that is that really experimental? That seems. That seems like a fundamental enough math that you would think that it would just work and not be experimental, but I guess it's in the experimental folder. It was called Euler Angle. I can only suppose that it's a late addition, and that's why it's in experimental still. Um, because it doesn't really seem like, one, if you decide to set your mind to it, you could probably come up with the algorithm on your own. Um, not that I really want to do that. Um, So I guess I can need to include another header. Let me go back to PDPCH. We'll do uh, include GLM, um, GTX, and then um, uh, Euler angles dot um, HPP. Yeah, and then I can construct a. Quaternion. I can I can directly construct uh, matrices. Oh, that's even better, Tmat. Um, so that that means that I don't even have to go to the middle ground of producing a um, producing a, uh, a quaternion. I can just create the matrix. So that's actually better than I thought. Um, so what we would do with then? Uh, is just take. Um, I could just throw this down there, but I'm just going to go ahead and type it up here to not have to do more typing for my test. Uh, so that'd be GLM, um, Euler, angles, uh, X, Y, and Z. Well, hang on. Is it X, Y, and Z? Oh, there's one that's specifically called Yaw Pitch Roll. Um, which actually takes care of X, Y, and Z with the correct names. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's also one. There's also a y, x, z, and I noticed that the y, x, z um, names its uh, names its parameters yaw pitch roll because it's actually the same. Um, but yeah, I can do um, yaw pitch roll. Or yaw pitch roll. Really? 
Hang on. GLM. Oh, it's just GLM Yaw Patrol. Yaw Patrol. Okay, that's better. What's Yaw? Yaw value. Returns Yaw value of Whaler angles uh, expressed in radians. So you can feed it a quaternion and get Yaw directly. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yaw Pitch Roll. And then I can do Yaw Pitch and Roll. Okay, cool. So I just needed to have the right extension, I guess. Let's see um, how things are spinning now that I've done this. Yeah, just remembering now that, yeah, I, did, I just changed pre-compiled pre header again, which is why this is taking so long. Right now, it's not helping me very much, but in practice, um, down the road, the pre-compiled header will help me improve build times when I'm working on shit. Okay, that's going fast. But uh, it kind of looks like it's rotating the correct direction. Because if you're looking down the positive, it should be going counterclockwise. So actually, yeah, this algorithm is better than what I had. Um, let me uh, slow, that, slow that down a little bit. <laughs> um, right now, pitch is at 30. Um, the reason why it's going so fast is because I was previously using um, uh, degrees, and it should be in radians. Um, yeah, so I'll just change that to uh, 1. There we go. Uh, this is something called hot constants. I have the ability to um, hard code values and change it in the code and automatically update some of that thing. But yeah, if we take a look at it going a lot more slowly, uh, so this is going at one radian per second or um, a full circle every three sec every 3.14 seconds, um, it is rotating the direction I expected. Um, it is going. Um, it is going counterclockwise when looking down the X. Uh, so actually, I think this is perfect. I think this Yaw Pitch Roll extension was exactly what the doctor ordered. Um, it just happens to be experimental for some reason. Um, but now that I have it, I know that I can reliably plug it in to my uh, camera uh, formula. Um, And I'm not really concerned about using radians for things like um, the perspective because it's constant expression anyway, which means that constant folding will, well, it's not constant folding, but um, it'll it'll take and pre-compute this value um, into radians. Cool. So let's confirm the other directions are rotating the correct way before I am convinced that this works. Um, yeah, right here. Um, and I'm wondering about the order of roll pitch yaw. Because I'm used to, say, so yeah, counterclockwise. I'm used to um, it being presented in that order roll pitch, then yaw. Um, but this algorithm does yaw. Um, pitch and roll, or yaw roll pitch, which is interesting. Um, yaw pitch roll. Um, I'm not sure if one is more correct or more um, common than the others. I suppose I could take a look at um, how Unreal does it with its, um, Unreal has a type called rotator, I think. And this is also, if you're looking up, counterclockwise, yeah, perfect, okay. Awesome, I think this is uh, finally working correctly. I just needed to get it in the correct coordinate system and I needed to get one of, get a GLM pre-made algorithm for doing rotators. 
Um, but yeah, now I'm curious. Got all these things open. Uh, now I'm curious about um, how Unreal does, Unreal does it. Because it's it has a rotator type that um, you specify the values, roll pitch, yaw, kind of like you would X, Y, Z in that. Yeah, so it does roll, pit, roll pitch, then yaw. Yeah, so I guess um, there might not be a canonical order for these. Um, I guess the main reason why I would why I would have made the decision to put roll last would have been because it's the one that you're going to use the least. But yeah, I don't know. So I guess we can just get used to this ordering. Um, roll, does does this maybe maybe, maybe uh, the header will tell me a little bit more? It doesn't. I was thinking that maybe like the last attribute like had a default or something, um, but it doesn't appear to. So I can't think of a great reason why roll would be last. But hey, hey it's like, at least it's working. I don't have to have to build a helper function anymore. I can just do um, get a rotation matrix by supplying. GLM, yellow pitch roll, and then providing those, um, providing those same uh, rotation values. Um, bearing in mind that I would need to plug in, um, that I would need to plug in um, the uh, GLM radians whenever I wanted to work in degrees. Um, just gonna quickly throw up the spinning algorithm that I had in the very beginning on this file because I don't really remember what it was. Yeah, it looks like it was. Oh, it was, yeah, and we had 30 and 120. So yeah, let me just quickly do um, the pitch roll. Um, throw these into GLM um, radians. Uh, GLM radians. OK, and then this should appear identical to what the little spinning animation that I had at the start of the stream. It does not, though. <laughs> it decidedly does not. What did I miss? Oh, I forgot to put the um, field of view into radians. So uh, yeah, the field of view um, for the perspective algorithm uh, was taking 60 radians, which is just like, um, so it's like, it's really small in the middle of the screen because it's just such a huge field of view that you're almost seeing behind you, maybe. Um, let's uh, run that. Now it should look like it did at the beginning of the screen. It does not look like it did at the beginning of the stream, though. Why is that? Oh, because yaw is now at the beginning and roll is last. OK. Yeah. I'm going to have to get used to that concept. Um, having to order roll is the last thing. So from now on, it'll be yaw and then pit. Huh? Roll pitch yaw. Oh, it's actually, OK, yeah. It's yaw's first. I'm just, I don't know. I'm so I'm so set in my ways of thinking roll pitch yaw, roll pitch yaw, um, that it rolls off the top of my tongue that way, or the tip of my tongue that way. But now it's got to be um, yaw pitch roll. But it's still doing weird shit. What am I missing? So yaw pitch roll. Yeah. 
catch raw. Catch speed being 30, so it should be going slowly this way, or so slowly this way, and then more quickly going this way. So what's this behavior? It's applying yaw first, or yaw last, I think. So the order of operations here is different. So I'm actually glad I'm testing this. Um, so what we're seeing is that yaw, pitch, and roll work great on their own. Yeah, so pitch slowly going that way. Um, It's going to be slowly going, well, a little bit quicker because I have it set to 60 or 120 degrees per second. Um, going counterclockwise, um, looking at takes. Yeah, so they, they're, that's a little frustrating um, if I'm understanding the situation correctly. Yeah, so it's 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 tumbling um, in the uh, the pitch value in its local coordinates, and then the whole thing is being rotated um, with yaw, and um, hmm. I may need to do a little bit of experimentation. But my impression is that it should be the other way around. It should be applying um, the yaw uh, first, and then from there rotating about. I don't know. Maybe maybe, the, maybe my point of reference is just wrong. Maybe this is a standard way of doing it. Um, either way, though, um, GLM is is implemented. I just got to clean up a. Few things um, review um, review the changes in the file to uh, re review the changes in the files uh, to make sure that everything is nice and clean before I um, commit it. Um, so I'll need to go through some uh, version control stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and, and terminate the stream. Um, got done the big goal that I wanted to get done. Um, and I'm, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research to see whether I care that the uh, GLM yaw pitch roll um, does it in a different order than I'd like. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, thanks for everybody who stopped in. Um, see you next time.